everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So this Saturday is the final of Melody Festival in 2022, whereby the winner will get to represent Sweden at Eurovision in May. Now, I have to admit, this Eurovision season, I haven't been very good at keeping up with Melody Festivalen, but what I've done today is I've listened to all of the 12 songs that are going to be, yeah, that are vying for the win on Saturday. Now, can I just say, I went straight into this with limited expectations based on a few people that subscribe to my channel who basically said, there's not much going on in Sweden this year. Um... I actually think there is. So literally today, I think I've listened to all of these 12 songs like five or six times and I'm really impressed. And I'm genuinely saying this, I can't remember a time where in regards to of the 12 songs whereby I've liked the most. Like I'm just looking at my kind of top 12 now and even song eight, that I've ranked eighth, I really, really like. There are so many good songs this year. And as a result of that, like this Saturday, I'm super excited to watch Melody Festival and because I actually think there is actually a plethora of decent songs that Sweden can select. So basically what I'm going to do is if you subscribe to my channel, you know that I do this. If you don't, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> enjoy watching Mediocre. Um, what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to rank my uh, favourites from obviously 12 to 1, but due to the fact that I have limited time, I'm going to watch a recap video produced by Mzigia Eurovizia. I always use their, please support their channel because I always use their recap videos. Um, and when each song comes on, I'm going to tell you where it ranks in my personal top 12. So this is my personal top 12 after listening to these songs all day. And trust me, it was not a chore. I actually think, I'm, I don't want to repeat myself, but I do think this is probably the strongest final that I can remember in regards to the number of songs that I really, really like. So the fact that people have said that it's not strong, I mean, anyway, that's probably a small number of people Sweden, you've got a great final this Saturday and I'm super excited about it. So let's watch the recap and as we listen to each snippet, I'll tell you where it ranks in my personal top 12. Um, okay, so Tios, Tios. Um, so this person is only in the final because they've got through uh, second chance, right? Well, Andrew Chanson, which we don't have Andrew Chanson anymore. Um, now, out of 12 songs, I think he does a good job <laughs> selling an okay song. Um, Love Purple, that's going for him. Um, for me, out of the 12 songs, this is my number 10. 10? I don't think he's. this is his first time at Melody Festival, right? I don't recognise him or his name. Um, it's a decent song, it's catchy, but yeah, there are nine of the songs that connect with me much more. This is nice in the background, I don't feel the need to download this song. I feel I've heard this sound quite a few times. Um, first of all, I did not realise that this was a member of the girl band Love Generation, who, what, what was their song again? I dance alone, get the music, play it on, on and on. Um, listen, this, again, this is my personal top 12, but what I'll say when I kind of rank each song is my opinion about kind of maybe what Sweden should pick. Um, I think if Sweden picks this song, I think this is a strong contender. Um, there are two particular songs that stand out in these top 12 that I think if selected could really kind of compete at Eurovision. Personally, this is my number four. I actually think this is a really, really, really strong song. And obviously when I found out she was part of Love Generation, it was after I did my top 12. Um, I kind of wanted to make it higher. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a really, really strong song. She performs it really well. Um, the staging is really intimate. The camera's on her. Uh, there's not much going on the staging, but you don't need it uh, because the song sells itself. 
Uh, this is a really strong song. Um, and yeah, my number four. Oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> the lyrics of that song, amazing. Um, you found me at the wrong time. Yeah, poignant. I just want to stay in this moment. Oh, hold a minute. <laughs> I was enjoying that far too much. Um, which is ironic because that's my number 11. <laughs> Look, obviously, Roman Benkston, uh, Eurovision Royalty, 2017. Um, I can't go on. I can't go on. Because you look so fucking beautiful. Um, I actually didn't really like that song. Actually, I really liked his song, um, oh, in 2020, Take a Chance. That song was amazing. Um, this song is so-so. In fact, I don't really remember it now. Uh, when it comes on, I've listened to all of these songs about five or six times. I didn't skip any. Um, this song, yeah, I'm just like, mm, but I'm waiting for the next song. Uh, not his best. Um, yeah, that's as much as I can say. Okay, so before it goes on to the next song, like I said, I think there are two songs which I think are smart choices for Sweden. Cornelia and also this song. Now, I did see when I was watching these songs that in the intro, that uh, songwriter um, for Lady Gaga, so I think Joker, who wrote Cypress's song last year, a really established songwriter, um, is behind, or one of the songwriters behind this song, it does sound quality, and I do think this song could compete. I'm also in this kind of camp, however, where I kind of want Sweden to kind of start sending some female vocalists. <laughs> like, 2020, obviously the year where it didn't happen, I particularly remember um, that Melody Festival and final, where obviously it was Anna, it was the Mamas, and it was... And it was Dotter. And I remember a lot of people were really excited that Sweden was going to send a female vocal, a female artist, and people were really excited. I remember when the mamas won. Bearing in mind, I that was my favourite, so I was super excited. And there was like a lot of memes going around being like, uh, yeah, we wanted a female vocal, but we didn't want this. <laughs> we didn't ask for this. Um, anyway, I digress. As a result of that, because Sweden has, like, in my living memory anyway, particularly obviously the last 10 years, they do love to send a male vocal. Um, I kind of want Sweden to send a female vocal. Um, so as a result, the, the, to be fair, this has got nothing to do with my ranking. Like, out of all the songs, number seven. But I do understand that this song actually has wide appeal. So regardless of my personal top 12 like the two songs that i feel could be extremely competitive at eurovision is cornelia and this one but based on what i've just said previously um if semi eurovision watches tune in i think we're used to sweden sending a man so as a result of that out of those two songs i think cornelia would be a better choice <laughs> John Lindbeck. Look, I'm going to call it Too Late for Love. I think whilst I loved it at the time, it was like in my top five, I think that song out of everyone, what year was that? 2019. Um, that's the song that's had more of a legacy for me. I listen to it all of the time, even today. Um, <laughs> Look, I think this is like the only kind of traditionally ballad. I know Cornelius is slow. Um, and it's nothing to do with the fact that this isn't Swedish either. I just don't think it's a great song. And this also isn't, as a British person, <laughs> having a pop at John Lundvik for um, composing or being part of It's Bigger Than Us in 2019, which obviously flopped. I think he's an incredible artist. I think his voice is out of this world. I just think when you listen to all of these songs back to back, this song just does not stand out. Like he's written better songs. I think he's a super talented guy. Um, and like I said, too late for love, literally listen to it all the time. But this song just misses the mark for me.
but I think he's great. My way, my way, my way, my um, Tone, is that how you say it? Tone? Um, this song, like, the lyrics, like, carry this song for me. And obviously, trans artist, amazing visibility for the trans community, totally here for it. Um, actually, like I said, I think my top eight, I absolutely love. And, and I, and I want to make that very clear. This is my eighth favourite. Um, I had listened to this and Anna's when I did a reaction video for um, semi-final one. Um, but if this gets played in Sweden, which it might not do because SVT has the most strictest copyright law <laughs> rules because that video was banned in Sweden that I did. Um, I was obsessed with this song. Uh, the message is great. She's great. And literally at the end when she finishes her face so endearing. I think she's a, an incredible artist and she's doing amazing things for the trans community and visibility. Um, like I said, all the top eight songs I like. Uh, it just, basically there are seven songs that are more kind of connecting with me, but the lyrics of this song, amazing. I can get enough. I can get enough. I can get enough of you. Um... <clears throat> Sorry, something's happening to my throat. Hold a minute. This staging is so camp <laughs> and I'm totally here for it. There's times I'm like, is a unicorn gonna come on stage? Um, I love the staging, but actually I love the song. It's number six for me. I think it's a great song. It's super, super catchy. She is a really interesting entertainer where I can't keep my eyes off of her. Um, and I think, A, the song is is an earworm, but B, the staging is camp, camp, camp. So as a result, I love it. My freedom. Um, okay, so, I mean, listening to all 12 songs, this song, this song doesn't pop, but actually, tell you what, put a load of singers behind you and actually cleverly with camera angles get them doing a bit of choreography to help the build of the song with the movement of the backing singers, suddenly you've got a song that actually properly stands out. With that said, number nine. Decent effort. I don't think Faith, I think this is a, a newbie, right? I don't think Faith has done Melody Festival and before I don't recognise her name. Um, she performs the hell out of this song, but fundamentally, like I said, top eight, my top eight are all songs that I've downloaded and they're on my national final playlist. Um, this misses the mark slightly for me uh, because the song itself is a bit of a throwaway for me but I think when I well when I watched it I was like okay actually I can see why this is definitely directly qualified to the final um yeah she seems like a great artist like I said she performs the hell out of this song and fantastic clever production of the backing singers that elevates the song in the second half very clever We are, we are, uh, uh. Oh, hold on a minute, Anna. Um, <laughs> this morning, like I said, I hadn't seen or he heard any of these songs prior to actually engaging with it this morning when I had a Melody Festival and final playlist on Spotify. And I was walking to work and obviously they were coming on and I swear to you, this song came on and I was like, oh my God, this song is bloody infectious. And I was quite surprised when I saw the visual. I hadn't kind of matched the voice with the person. And I will say the staging is a bit budget. It is literally just a screen with some pretty questionable kind of, yeah, images in regards to the quality. It doesn't really elevate the song, but luckily this song is 
Um, I actually think it's a really, really, really good song. I'm not saying it's probably a good choice for Sweden to pick, um, but nonetheless, I actually think the song is bloody good. It's a really good song. It's my number two. It's really good. Oh, hold on a minute. And it's a Thomas Jason song as well. And you can hear that. Actually, that makes sense going into Anna because this is a Tom and G Thomas Jason song as well. Um, okay. So I actually have been really enjoying Anna's comeback to Melody Festival in Ashes to Ashes Loved. Uh, My Kingdom Come Loved. When I watched this, when I reacted to the four songs that were competing for semi-final one to get through into the final, I just felt the staging was dark and I just didn't understand the horses, the imagery of the horses behind. Um, and even if someone says, oh, it's this lyric, this lyric, I don't care. Um, it just, I feel that, th okay, it's number five. When you listen to it, I don't know why I'm showing you my phone, it makes no difference. Um, when you listen to it, the studio version, it is a really, really good song. And I just want to know what creative genius thought, Anna, you've got this. It's all about you and your performance, because luckily she can perform so they can get away with that. But whoever decided to have a grey, white and black stage and horses is beyond me, because genuinely, this is a really, really good song. I didn't think it initially. I thought I was biased. I was like, well, I like Anna anyway, so I'm going to like it. And I thought I was convincing myself that I liked it when I watched her Heat performance. But actually, I actually really, really, really like this song. Um, and it's just let down by staging. But at the end of the day, it's my number five, and it's got nothing to do with the fact that I'm kind of massively digging Anna at Melody Festival and over the last few years, the song is a good song. Right. This song, like literally, um, super infectious. And it was my number two, but when I then watched the live performances, it went to number one. Like the energy on stage, the engagement with the audience, like it is. And I'm, there's me saying like, I've already said two songs that I think would be good choices for Sweden, thinking about being competitive at Eurovision. I think this song could do well at Eurovision. I don't think it's a winner. I don't think it's a winner, but I think this song could be easily top 10. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. This is my favorite. I mean, I actually think it's a really strong vinyl. So yeah. My number one. Run to the hills, making it on my own. I'm my Here I come. Oh. Run to the hills. Right. My relationship with Clara, <laughs> go back to... No, 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 no. I'm singing the song Nobody, but I can't sing. Um, that song, oh, literally such a good song. I mean, what was that last song she did at Melody Festival and that like people liked, I was like, it's not that great. Um, this song is something else. I will say my top three, when I was listening to all 12 songs this morning, my top three were songs when I was listening to it and I couldn't wait to listen to it again. And so, yeah, number three. Uh, as soon as it came on, I was like, this is my jam. And I'm super excited that it's Clara as well because honestly, justice for nobody because that song was epic. Um, number three. This is a very good song. So that's my personal ranking. I am super excited about watching the final this Saturday. Um, so yeah, please let me know what you think. Uh, please do, in the comments, let me know your favorites. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Please do click the notification button so you're informed if and when I post videos. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.